Nice deep, easy breath. Hold it and all together let it out. One more time, but just a little deeper. One, two, three. Nice deep, easy breath. Hold it and all together let it out. From this moment forward, please exaggerate every request that I have to offer you. If I ask you to relax, just let the shoulders go, whatever's necessary. The count of three, take a deep and gentle breath. One, two, three. Nice deep, easy breath. Hold. And now, as you let it out, breathe normally, close your eyes. Close your eyes and focus on the sound of my voice. Go ahead and close your eyes right now. Your eyes are not glued shut. You can open them if you wish. I will ask this. Do not open them unless I specifically tell you to. Because I need you focused through this entire process. But I want you right now to use your imagination. That's what this is all about. Picture. Imagine. Visualize what I call a blanket of relaxation tucked safely and securely down around your feet. See in your mind a particular pattern. See in your mind a particular color. Understand that whatever part of your body this blanket covers or touches, you will let it go totally loose, totally relaxed, kind of like an old wet dish rag. Begin by relaxing the bottoms of your feet and now relax the tops of your feet. It may be difficult to relax if somebody asks you to or if somebody tells you to, but don't worry about that because you are in charge of the process. You're the one that makes this happen at your own pace and your own speed. In a minute, I'm going to use the word sleep. You will never be truly asleep like you are in your own bed at night. You'll be aware of the sound as I pass back and forth upon the stage. You'll hear the laughter coming from the audience and the applause. And you'll know that as these people laugh and clap and applaud, they care very much about what is happening to you on stage. And you'll just let that knowledge pass through you like a wave and carry you down. As you begin to relax, you'll feel the people around you relax. You might feel somebody's hand drop and land on your side. You might feel somebody's head roll over and land on your shoulder. It will not bother you. It will not disturb you. Because you will know that these people are becoming deeply, profoundly relaxed, and you will let that knowledge pass through you like a wave and carry you down deeper. In a minute, I'm going to use that word sleep. So in your mind, say silently, I'm going deeper and deeper to sleep. I'm going deeper and deeper to sleep. I'm relaxing and drifting down deeper, deeper, and deeper still. From time to time, I may excuse a few of you and send you back out into the audience. If I send you back out, it does not mean that you cannot be hypnotized. It simply means that for now, at this point in time, perhaps we didn't get you under as quickly as we deeply as we might like, and so I will send you back out into the audience. But if I do this, you must leave quietly. Do not leave on your own. Your meeting could distract the people near you, or it could be that you are deeply under and not aware of it. So always allow me to be the judge. In your mind, see that blanket of relaxation and pull it up gently, safely, securely around your mind. Feel that sense of relaxation move up into the calves, feel it moving up into the knees, feel it moving up into the hips. And notice as I'm talking to you, your breathing has always become deeper, more rhythmic, more relaxed. That's all it takes just to focus on the sound of my voice and allow the sound of my voice to carry you down. As you say silently, I go deeper and deeper asleep. I go deeper and deeper asleep by relaxing and drifting deeper, deeper, and deeper still. Now in your mind, I want you to pull that blanket up over your shoulders and feel that sense of relaxation enter into your torso. Feel it moving up into your chest from the front, feel it moving up your spine. And as it does, it relaxes everything. The spine just starts to melt away. The shoulders, when I count from one to three, let them go. One, two, three, let them relax. Relax the elbows, the upper arms, the hands, the tips of the fingers. Maybe you become aware of a slight tingling sensation in your fingertips. Maybe you become aware of your toes. If this happens, you're already very deeply under and you will continue to go deeper as you follow each and every one of my suggestions. Deeper and deeper asleep. Deeper and deeper asleep by relaxing and drifting deeper and deeper still. In your mind, you pull that blanket up over your head. And now your chin wants to tilt or at least downward toward your chest. Simply allow gravity to take its course. Allow it to drop. Relax the back of your head. Relax the forehead. Relax the face. Relax the right side, the left side, the jaw. Notice the color shifting and changing within the eyelids. They may turn from a pinkish red to a green or yellowish blue. They may be going the other way. But as they shift and as they change, that's your cue to let yourself go. You're already drifting down deeper and deeper asleep. Deeper and deeper asleep, relaxing and drifting. If I touch you, it will not bother you. It will not disturb you. You'll just let it drop. Relax and drift deeper and deeper still. 
I know you're wondering, is it possible to become more realized? And the answer is yes. I'm going to count backwards now from 10 to 1. With every single count, take yourself down twice as deep, relax twice as much. When I reach 1, we're going to unlock the hidden creative performer in every single one of you. When I reach 1, you'll be in a very deep state of hypnosis. We're going to be able to follow every one of my suggestions. And now, 10. Wrap your imagination around the sound of my voice and allow the sound of my voice to begin to carry you down. Nine, just imagine that floating sensation as you drift and melt gently downward into your chair. With every count, relaxing twice as deep. Eight, with every count, drifting deeper and deeper, unlocking your imagination. Seven, gravity deeper and deeper still. It's like gravity has been turned up to 20 and it rolls you down further and further. Six, relaxing and drifting deeper and deeper still. Relaxing and drifting deeper and deeper still. Five, relaxing and going down. Relaxing and going down. Imagining all the critical things we can do. Four, relaxing and going down deeper. Drifting deeper. Three, drifting deeper and deeper still. With every breath you let out, two, letting yourself go. So good. One, relaxing and drifting deeper. I'm going to come up to some of you and I'm going to give you a gentle tug forward. If I do this, if I do this, just get ready to recognize that. If I do this, and I say that word sleep, every time I do, you're going to let yourself go totally loose, totally relaxed. My touch will not bother you. My touch will not disturb you. But if I pull my head forward and say sleep, it's time to let go. Sleep. Drift. Deeper and deeper and deeper still. Put your hand on her shoulder. Relax and slip. Deeper and deeper. She's perfect. Relax and slip. Deeper and deeper still. Relax and slip. Deeper and deeper still. Relax and slip. Deeper. Sleep. Deeper. Relax and slip. Relax and slip. Relax and slip. Sleep. 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 My touch will not burn you. Sleep. Relax and sleep, sleep, relax and sleep, deeper and deeper still, deeper and deeper. If somebody's under the name of the audience, please point them out to me. If you are in the audience, you will continue to drift deeper in the audience. If you are in the audience, you will do all of the suggestions that I give to the people on stage. And once there is room, I will bring you up with the rest of us. All of my volunteers, whether you're on stage or in the audience, listen carefully and listen closely. You're about to hear a huge round of applause come from the crowd, and you're going to let it pass through you like a wave and carry you down deeper. Folks, it is showtime. Let it pass through you like a wave and carry you down deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper still. Perfect. All my volunteers, listen carefully and listen closely. We are going to go on a series of wonderful imaginative voyages. You're going to be doing some things that are not possible in everyday life. These are voyages of your mind, and in your mind, anything can be possible. And in a minute, I'm going to count from one to five, and as I do, you're going to pull yourself up gently into your chair with your eyes closed, and you're going to focus on my voice. And as you pull up gently in that chair, I want you to picture, I want you to imagine, I want you to visualize, whether you're on stage or in the audience, that you are no longer sitting on a chair in an auditorium, that you are on a plush, comfortable, first-class jet airplane on a plane that will be bound for a beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii. And as you sit up in that chair and you picture that, you're going to make it as real and vivid in your thoughts as you possibly can make it, and you will listen to my voice because I will be your pilot. I will have a very important mission, a mission explicitly for you. But remember this, every time I say sleep, boom, you're going back down to where you are right now because every time we bring you back up, you become twice as creative, twice as imaginative. But right now, with your eyes closed, one, begin to pull up gently into your chair, focusing on the sound of my voice. Two, gently pull up into full seated position, focusing on the sound of my voice. Three, gently poking up, focus on the sound of my voice. Four, picture yourself on the seat of that airplane and listen carefully. Five, ladies and gentlemen, this is your pilot speaking. We would like to welcome you now to flight 555, round trip to Honolulu, Hawaii. In a few minutes, we will be preparing the cabin for takeoff, and we want you to know that this is quite simply the safest aircraft on the planet. No harm or damage can befall this aircraft. In a few moments, you're going to hear the airplane's engines rev up, and when you hear them, you're going to feel yourself vibrating quite a bit. As we taxi out to that runway, you're going to feel the forces of gravity pulling you farther and farther back into your chair. Right now, passengers, we must observe, must observe all standard safety protocols. At this point, passengers, please see to it that your seatbelts are buckled low and tight over your lap, and that your tray tables are upright and in locked position. Any and all carry-on 
and luggage will be stored either in the overhead compartment or beneath the seat in front of you. And listen carefully, you're about to hear the airplane's engines rev up. And right now, begin to feel the vibration of that aircraft as we taxi out to that runway. Begin to feel the rocking and swaying and swaying and rocking. We're pulling you farther and farther as we go faster and faster down that runway. We're going faster and faster down that runway at the count of three. We're taking off and we're going up. One, two, three. <laughs> going higher and higher and higher at the count of three. We're about to take a very sharp bank to the right. One, two, three. <laughs> Leveling off over that altitude. You're at 40,000 feet and you are feeling good. You are happy. You are on your way to Hawaii. You're thinking about all the incredible things that you are going to do. You will keep your eyes closed. Until I tell you to open them and pass it, just turn your head, look up that window to your right, and you will see that we are flying over the desert down below the sand. And I mean nothing but sand as far as the eye can see. And ladies and gentlemen, this is your pilot speaking. We regret to inform you as we fly over the Sahara Desert that the outside air temperature is 135 degrees. <laughs> Apparently, the air conditioner has malfunctioned and the heater is stuck on high. And we are receiving many complaints from the passengers about the oppressive heat. We are sending our flight crew around to take a closer look. For now, passengers do whatever is necessary to keep cool. This is not good. The hot sun is breaking down on the outer skin of that aircraft. You can begin to fan yourself and seek to cool you down. It's not just the heat, though. It's the heat. You know what it's like when you are hot, you are sticky, you are sitting on vinyl, and that underwear just starts to die. Oh, oh, that is so uncomfortable. When I count from one to three, that air conditioner is back. One, two, three. Hang on for just a second. I need to watch it. Go ahead and have a seat. Ah, oh, that feels good. That feels so good. Just feel the cool waves of air blasting up over your face. Oh, that feels so good. Now, your eyes will stay closed until I tell you to open them. Your eyes will stay closed until I tell you to open them. Your eyes will stay closed until I tell you to open them. But turn and look out that window to your left and you will see that we are currently flying over the Antarctic and down below you ice and I mean glaciers as far as the eye can see. Now ladies and gentlemen, the is your captain speaking. We are going to inform you as we fly over the Antarctic that the absolute temperature is 35 below zero. Apparently the, the heat has malfunctioned and the air conditioner is stuck on high. We are receiving many complaints from the passengers about the terrible cold. We are sending our flight crew around to take a closer look. But for now, do whatever is necessary to keep going. This is how the temperature is dropping. It is 35 below zero. Frost is forming on the windshield of that aircraft. Icicles are forming from the roof. Body heat is your solution. Body heat. You must conserve body heat. It is cold. It is unbelievably cold. But I can't remember. That heat is fixed. Oh my god. Two, three, four. Oh, oh, that feels so good. Now, passengers, I'd like you all to sit straight with your feet on the floor. Put one hand palm down on each of your knees. And you know, passengers, while you were sitting there, our flight crew came around and they played a nasty practical yeah. joke on you guys. They put a great big spot of glue on each and every one of your knees. And I'm really sorry to tell you, this is airline quality, industrial strength super glue. It is the strongest that you see in our domain. And the more you fight, the more you struggle, the more tightly your hands will become glued. It's okay to fight. You can do these levels, every part of your body. You just can't move those hands. Go ahead and fight it. Go ahead and struggle. Did you notice that fly that landed on the tip of your nose? Damn, that is starting to itch. Just crawling around there on the tip of your nose. Should be great to get them off, but you can't because your hands are glued firmly, glued tightly. Oh, the second fly just landed on the cheek. One on the nose now, one on the cheek, third fly. Oh, that one just went straight up the nostrils. Man, I hate when that happens. Oh, this is not good. A child brought his ant farm in his carry-on luggage. It is over. The ants are loose in the cabin. They're crawling. Oh my god, they're fire ants. They're biting. They're crawling up your legs, into your pants, ants in your pants. This is not good. But I count from one to three. Those hands are free. One, two, three, four. And those hands are gone. And everybody said straight, feet flat on the floor, with one hand palm down on each of your knees, and remember that word, because whenever you hear it, it is time to sleep. Drift deeper, deeper. Now there is a man in the audience who's about to feel a tap on the shoulder. It will not bother him, it will not disturb him, but if you have video, get it ready. Just tap that individual, he will stay sleeping. That man, listen carefully. Listen, just tap, that's fine. That man, listen carefully. When I count from one to five, your eyes will open. You're going to realize an amazing transformation has taken place. You're going to realize at that moment that you are a contestant on the MTV Dance Competition. 
<laughs> moves. And you're gonna stand up and you're gonna start to dance your way oh, up the aisle. Then you're gonna dance your way up onto the stage. Then you're gonna dance your way over to an open seat. You're gonna sit down oh, in that seat and the instant your butt hits that seat, boom, it's lights out. You'll melt away exactly as you are right now. But when I count from one to five, welcome to the MTV dance off. One, two, three, four, five. Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got some good ones. 
So we move on to what we call waking hypnosis. Even Henry laughing is so funny. So it takes a <laughs> he was just like. To get into this position and their eyes have to be stay, stay closed through the whole thing. We're going to wake them up into a state of waking hypnosis. Their eyes will be open. They'll still be deeply under. But they'll be aware of everything. And in fact, here's what the crazy part is. The suggestions are going to get bigger. When I count from one to five, all of you are going to be sitting up straight, eyes open. You're going to feel great. Why not? on Facebook. But you won't be. You'll be still deeply <laughs> under, still following every one of my suggestions. What? Why this is so important. From this moment forward, every single time that you look at me from the front, you're going to believe that I'm very nicely dressed. And I may ask you about it. If I do, you'll compliment me. Because <laughs> you've been on a... <laughs> you will believe that I am mooning you directly in the face. Okay. The moment I face you again, I am nicely dressed. It's only when my back turns toward you that you suddenly realize it's Moon River. When I count from one to five, you'll be wide awake. The suggestion will take effect. One, two, three, four, five. You're wide awake. Well, guys, we are going to get started with the show. So, I tell you what. The young lady in the stripes, I would like you to come and occupy this empty chair right over here. And you, sir, with the dog on your shirt, come sit in this empty chair right over here. And I'm going to be turning to talk to the audience about what's going to be happening to you guys over the next several minutes. Please understand that even though I'm talking to them, I'm also talking to you. Now, for you guys, what you have to understand is how incredibly focused these guys are going to become in very short order. We're just going to simply move into progressive relaxation. Your body, oh, it's going to be loose. <laughs> it's not going to stay that way, of course. I mean, you know, when I mean relaxed, I don't mean... I don't mean to be your body is going to be loose and floppy. Oh, uh, in the stripes, what is your name, please? Mary, uh, it looks to me like you had pulled your shoes off earlier to make yourself more comfortable. <laughs> If you don't mind, Mary, I'm just going to put them on the floor in front of you right here. I'm not sure you're comfortable. How many of you guys, by the way, have noticed I've been limping a little bit? Has I been around? Have you noticed that? Uh, maybe you noticed that. Yeah. Uh, are you a Marine or a Watsi or what? Good, correct. Congratulations. You do a lot of running. I mean, you want to go like five miles every day or something, right? Oh my God. That's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Uh, if you really get into this, you've got to learn to stretch. <laughs> Focus on the tip of my finger. Take in a gentle breath of air. Hold. And as you let it out, everybody sleep. Drift. Deeper. Deeper. Because when I count from one to five, you're all going to be sitting straight. I'll be nicely dressed no matter what angle you look at me from. However, from this moment forward, every time you hear me and only me say the word green, you're going to believe that the people sitting close to you on stage smell absolutely wonderful. They are giving oh, the God. sweetest, most delicious aroma you have ever encountered. You cannot get enough of that aroma. In fact, you're going to put your nose right there in the nape of the neck where that aroma is coming from. It is that delicious. But every time I say red, you're going to believe the person sitting closest to you is giving off the most foul, humongously nauseating B.O. that you have ever encountered. They will smell worse than a thousand hobos. It's <laughs> Green, if you realize how truly wonderful they are, when I say red, oh my god, it's like they cut the cheese and lit it. When I count from one to five, you're going to be sitting up straight, wide awake. One, two, three, four, five, wide awake. Well, guys, if I look stressed, I apologize. It had to do with the traffic I hit. I was in the Boston suburbs, and I thought I was going to take one of the interstates up, and I missed it, and I ended up on surface roads the entire time, and I hit a road of red lights like you would not believe. I mean, it was just one red light after another red light after another red light. And I was in there to myself, all right, is this light ever going to turn green? It did. I got a green light, finally, at long last, and I made it a block or two. Actually, I went through two green lights. Next thing you know, red light. I come screeching to a hall. And there's this, 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 Accident, you know, in the middle of the intersection, the dude said, Hey, buddy, I had the green light. And then I said, No, you did not have the green light. 
Now that light, that light was red. If it was anything, that light was red. Oh my God, who did that? Who, know who did that? Point that person out to me. Oh, I gotta know, what does that smell like to you, man? Oh my God. Oh my God. Anyway, nothing but green lights from that moment forward. Man. That was great, is it? Oh, that's good. Who's that coming from? Is that a new perfume? What does that smell like? Uh, yeah. What does that smell like to you? Amazing. Oh, everybody hold your index finger right in front of your face, about three feet. Stare at it. Turn it around. Admire it if you must. When I say go to the creepiest, coolest, weirdest thing that's going to happen, it's going to start to move backward toward your nose. I don't care how hard you try to fight it. You're not going to be able to stop it. I don't care how much you work out. I mean, very basic. I understand, but it's going to be backward toward your nose. You'll be putting your knee into it. Put your elbow. It's not going to make any difference. It will touch your nose. And the moment it touches your nose, bingo. It's lights out. It's going to melt away. Stare at it. Focus on it. Go! Because the more you fight, the more you struggle. It's going to move backward toward your nose. I don't care how much you try to fight it. It's okay to fight it. It's going to get stronger. It's moving backward toward your nose until it touches that nose. And then pow. Lights out. Getting stronger and moving faster. The moment it touches that nose, pow. Lights out. That's right. It's getting stronger and moving and faster, faster and stronger, stronger and faster until it touches that nose, until it touches that nose, it just sit tight, sir. until it touches that nose, and the moment it touches that nose, bingo, lights out, and <laughs> you've been like half in, half out all the way through, so I'm going to let you relax, just look in the eyes, and you can find the light make sure you go, one of them, perfect, I'm going to let you go back down, thank God, give it up for you, give me a round of applause, I need to ask you a question. What is your school team name? The Owls. Oh, fascinating. That's awesome. All my volunteers on stage, listen carefully and listen closely because from this moment forward, no matter where you are, no matter where I am, whenever you hear me and only me utter the words Keene State or refer to me to Keene, New Hampshire or simply say the name Keene, all the women on stage will suddenly realize that somebody, and you don't know who, somebody has just come up behind you and pinched you square on the butt. You're going to jump out of your chair with a resounding shriek and you won't know who did it, but you will believe it was one of these nasty, nasty men with you on stage. <laughs> Now, you will never get physically touchy. You will not this touch anybody. Good. You'll just get a little ticked off. But every time I say keen or refer in any way to keen state, put it square on the butt. Now, men, listen carefully and listen closely. Because whenever I refer to your team name, the Owls, whenever I refer to your team name, the Owls, you're going to believe that somebody, and you don't know who, has just come up behind you and begun to give you the world's largest wedgie. <laughs> and I'm really sorry to tell you this, guys, because every time I say Owls, that wedgie's going to pull higher and higher and higher. But ladies, whenever I say cane, boom, square on the butt. When I count from one to five, wide away. One, two, three, four, five, wide away. I'm so excited to be here. I, I, I don't get to New Hampshire very often. This is my very first time here in the town of Keene. I'm very excited to be here. Keene State is like the first time I've ever done this. And, I'm sorry, is, it, is there an issue? Ow. <laughs> What's the um? Somebody poked you? Uh, have a seat. Make yourself comfortable. Make yourself comfortable. Um, anyway, this is the first time I have ever been here at Keene State. I'm really excited to go on with this show. I'm sorry, is there a problem? Did you touch her? Oh, I, I didn't see it. It's okay if I move you. You just go ahead and sit next to this girl with the Hello Kitty. I love that, by the way. That's awesome. And he's got, he can't reach you from over there, can he? Okay, great. Thank you so much for making me part of your show here at Keene State. I am excited. Him? Him too? Oh. Okay, ladies, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Pardon the pun. Have a seat. Make yourself comfortable. I was told that the men were going to be pure gentlemen. That's, uh, okay, that's not actually how they said it. What they said was these guys have real owl spirit. That's actually how they put it. And I just interpreted owl spirit to mean that these guys were going to be gentlemen. Turns out, no, owl spirit means something completely different. It means that there are no gentlemen. How many of you ladies are being bugged by the men? Let me know. How many of you ladies would like some major heavy duty revenge? Then ladies, revenge is at hand. Men, I apologize in advance. <laughs> but I am a huge, huge college sports fan. Not so much the sports, although those are fine. I love the team names. But understand this. I came from a high school with a very boring team name. We were the Senators. 
Who cares? I like animal names, like uh, like you know, the owls. I mean, come on, what an awesome name that is. Because owls are these fierce birds of prey, right? And, and owls strike at night, right? And like owls just pluck the enemy right off the field. And I could just imagine the excitement. You're standing where they go, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the owls. And the owls are right onto the stage. And I can hear the audience chanting, the owls, the owls, the owls, the owls. Man, I love the owls. Guys, when you take a closer look, you'll suddenly realize that not any one of you is wearing any underwear at all. Check it out. <laughs> yeah, that is comfort. <laughs> so everybody step straight, feet flat on the floor. One hand palm down on each of your knees. Focus your eyes on the tip of my finger. Take a gentle breath and... When I count from one to five, all of you will be wide awake. <laughs> and sometimes I'll just see me come up to people and do just what I do to you, say sleep, and they'll melt away. Whenever I go up to a person and I say sleep and they go under like you are, you're going to realize that that person I just hypnotized has really cool shoes. And you're going to believe that you like shoes more than most men like shoes. In fact, you're going to feel compelled to go over to that individual and steal his or her shoes right off their feet. Now, you know, if I catch you, I'm going to make you give them back. So you're going to be really stinky about it. You're going to do it behind my back, stealthily, so that I can't catch you. Because oh if I catch you, I'm going to make you give them back. So the moment you've gone over and stolen their shoes, you're going to come back to where you were sitting right now, and you're going to hide those shoes by stuffing them up under your shirt. And nevertheless, every time I say sleep, you're going to go to that new person, steal their shoes, stuff those under your shirt. This will go on and on to everybody I hypnotize. When I count from one to five, you'll be wide awake. You'll be the world's greatest shoe thief. Everybody else, if you see him stealing shoes, you will let him do it. In fact, it, even though you will see him, it is if you don't see him. As if you don't see him, he's like the wallpaper. He's invisible to you. If he steals your shoes, you won't know that they are being stolen. If your shoes are stolen, you will not know that they are gone. When I count from one to five, all of you will be wide awake. But this man I'm touching, the world's greatest shoe thief. One, two, three, four, five, wide awake. I like to get to know some of our volunteers better. Like, for example, oh, those are nice boots. We'll do those later. <laughs> Julie? Julia, I apologize. Anne? Emily, good to meet you, Emily. Shoes, Emily, sleep. Emily, listen carefully and listen closely because I have an important job for you. Emily, from this moment forward, no matter where you are, no matter where I am, whatever you hear me and only me say the words at the movies. Whenever I shout out the words at the movies, Emily, you have to stand up. You're going to shout at the top of your voice these words, Run, Forrest, run! And then you will sit right back down. Whenever I say at the movies, Emily, you're going to stand up and shout, Run, Forrest, run! This will go on and on until I tell you to sleep. When I count from one to five, you'll be sitting <laughs> and the congestion will be gone. One, two, three, four, five, wide away. What is your name, sir? I brought you a station. I forgot it already. Connor, thank you so much. You're like the third Connor I've met today. It's a very popular name. Connor, sleep. Connor, listen carefully and listen closely because I have a revelation for you. Connor, at some point, you will hear or see a woman leap to her feet and shout, run, forest, run. When that happens, the moment she sits down, you're going to stand up, and at the top of your voice, you're going to belt out, but I've got to save Bubba, and sit right back down. And if she belts out, run, forest, run, you're going to stand up and shout, but I've got to save Bubba. This will go on and on until I have you sleep. When I come from one to five, away. One, two, three, four, five, wide away. And, uh, hey, what was your name again? Becky, Becky, and April. April, sleep. April, listen carefully and listen closely. Forward. No matter where you are, no matter where I am, whenever you hear me and only me say the words, working out. Becky, whenever I say working out, you're going to shout at me for no reason that you can think of these words. Hey, great. But you will not know why you shouted that, but every time I say working out, you're going to shout at me, hey, that Henry's not the true sheep thief. This will go on and on until I tell you to sleep. When I count from one to five, wide away. One, two, three, four, five, wide away. Did you say it was Becky? Yeah. Becky, sleep. Becky, listen carefully and listen closely because no matter where you are, no matter where I am, whether I and only I say the word. 
Whenever I say the word pop, or refer in any way to the word pop, or use a word that involves the word pop, Becky, you're going to realize that your belly button has popped off your belly and is now rolling around <laughs> on the stage. And you're going to want to find your belly button, because if you don't, your intestines will fall out. Don't worry, I have a spare, I will give it to you every time I say pop, out they come, rolling around on the stage. When I count from one to five, wide away. One, two, three, four, five. I've seen guys go through the airport with those. They are really hard to remove, aren't they? Have a seat. Make yourself comfortable and sleep. And listen carefully and listen closely because no matter where you are, yeah. no matter oh, where God. whenever you hear me and only me refer to the word cougar or in any oh. way say the word cougar, you're going to shout at me indignantly, hey, my mom's a cougar. And go <laughs> and you've done it. Go right on about it. But every time that I and only I say the word cougar, how long did Henry take to, to, to tie those today? Hmm? How long did it take Henry to tie those My today? mom's a cougar. You won't be angry. You won't be upset. You'll just be a little irritated. But I will skin set exactly what you'll say whenever I say cougar. When I count from one to five, you'll be sitting up straight, wide awake. The suggestion will take effect. <laughs> <laughs> Deserts, 
and there's this guy riding along on his horse. And all of a sudden, this uh, the big cat jumped on a rock above him, and it was not, well, it's not a puma. It was a, it was a cougar, this big... Hey! My mom's a cougar! Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Now I'm I should back. never do that to a Marie. Um, <laughs> anyway, it is great to be here. I'm so thrilled, and uh, I just wanted to tell you before we move on, my all time. It's too good not to stop. I can't stop. I'm a little embarrassed to talk about it because, to be honest, it's kind of a chick flick, but I'm a romantic. I cannot help it. I love Titanic. To me, Titanic <laughs> is a moving, emotional experience. It's just one of the most. <laughs> By the way, did I tell you about that nature movie with the cougar? Like, hey! My mom's a cougar! I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> Does he find them there or here? 
Excellent, excellent. Now, I understand that before he enters the ring, he goes through some sort of elaborate ritual filled with movement and sound. I've never seen it. I don't think any of you guys have ever seen it. No. But have him give us a demonstration. <laughs> we, should, we should step aside. This could be big. Uh, Especially number three, I'm going to give you a roll you're not necessarily used to. 
no matter where you are, no matter where I am, whenever you hear classical music play, you three at that moment will realize that you are prima ballerinas. And your lifelong dream has been to dance. And you want to stand up and you're going to be funny. To your PA and pirouette and trim the light fantastic. Now, at first, that music will be very, very soon, very melodic, but it might change. It will change to the William Tell Overture, which, if you do not know it, is the Lone Ranger theme song. If you don't know it, it's because you didn't see the movie The Lone Ranger this summer, and that's good because it sucks. But every time that movie music changes, you will suddenly realize that you are no longer ballerinas, you are cowboys. And you will mount your horse, and you will gallop one complete revolution around the entire audience, and you shouting, Hyo Silver! Hyo Silver away! Or until the music comes to a stop, at which point you will come to with no idea what you've been doing or how you got there. One and two. Listen carefully to this sound. All right, here's where I need you guys to help me. I'm going to start my hand low like this. I'm going to raise it to a crescendo. And when that happens, you're going to make like a drumming sound on the ground. Uh, your feet on the floor, your hands on your lap. Whatever makes a good drumming sound, you're going to raise it up together and you're going to try to cut it off together. So let us practice. A little bit louder, one more practice. One and two, listen to this sound. Because no matter where you are, whenever you hear this sound, you're going to realize that you're in the army now and you're stuck behind enemy lines and those are enemy choppers coming to get you. But stop. You won't let them get you. No. Because you are. That sound comes to a stop, at which point you're going to come to with no idea who you are, what you've been doing, you'll just know that you're done. But whenever you hear this sound again, you are going to But you say, whenever you hear classical music, you're going to be a ballerina. When I count from one to five, all of you are away. Go over your special code word or code sound now, because whenever you hear that code word or sound, you will immediately perform your task. One, two, three, four, five. Why away. Well, guys, I want to thank you for coming up and volunteering. I have to apologize. We simply ran out of time with the mind reading part of the show and couldn't get to the hypnosis, and I apologize. I noticed that some of you made yourself more comfortable by taking off your shirt. <laughs> and he graciously has uh, volunteered to keep them warm with the structure. So he'll take those out. Uh, when you go back now, ladies, do make sure that you have with you everything that you brought up. Please do not leave the room. I do have some closing comments. Uh, let's go ahead and stand up so we can shake them all out. That'll be perfect. <laughs> right, just uh, shake, 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 shake. There we go. <laughs> and uh, like I said, when these guys give you applause, grab your shoes, grab everything, and head on back down to the curb and not leave the room. Guys, give it up for them. Give them a huge round of applause. Also, hit up my spotters and 